everyone. Welcome to the Feeling Lighter podcast by We Shape, where we shed old beliefs that no longer serve us one episode at a time. The bottom line is how we feel about ourselves changes everything. everything. It sure does. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about our guest today. Her name is Mariah, and we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, because I struggle with it so much, mm. is burnout. Burnout. So um, let me let me go ahead and, and go over her bio, and then we'll we'll get her right in here because you and I we couldn't we couldn't narrow down our questions enough. So I wanna I wanna start talking to her right away. So here we go. Mariah is a Yale and functional medicine trained CNM, MSN, with her undergraduate degree in marketing. She helps women feel turned on by their life, their lover, and themselves. Her work online brings her 23 years of experience supporting women together in one place to co-create deep transformation, energy, and passion. Mariah does a great deal of work with women to expand their energy, hormones, libido, confidence, and much, much more. Mariah has held the hands of thousands of women around the world, from Ganda to Haiti, Central America, all across North America and Australia, supporting them through all of their seasons of change. Welcome, Mariah. Hey, you two, nice to be here. Well, today we're talking about something really important, and uh, Lisa and I, you know, we did a lot of prep work for this episode and we couldn't narrow our questions down. So we're going to get right into the topic of burnout. So yeah. let's just start with the basics. What is burnout? Yeah, well, I think let's talk about symptoms. So oh. here are the things that I hear mm. when someone is breaking on burnout. They're tired. There's a loss of motivation, often a loss of creativity. Mm. If someone is breaking on burnout, there can be things like changes in hair and skin and nails, yeah. uh, strange cravings, um, increase in abdominal weight. Mm. Uh, the thyroid and the adrenals are impacted over time, which someone might not know what those symptoms are, but I see them on labs. And it's generally a byproduct of those of us that are ambitious and we want to do it all. And we continue to do it all on fumes, not setting boundaries, and um, overdoing it. Oh, gosh. I feel so called out um, when we talk about burnout yeah. <laughs> and stuff like this. Yeah. Um, you talked about the symptoms, which, I mean, I think we can relate to those for sure. What? What's the root of it? Like, what's what's the the deeper <laughs> issue with burnout, and why are we seeing it so much? I think maybe maybe it was happening, you know, ten, twenty, thirty years ago, but why are we seeing it so much now, and the manifestation yeah. of it, especially with women, especially with women? Um, I think we're inundated. So I love Alison Armstrong. She talks about the female brain having diffuse awareness, and it serves us. Mm -hmm. We are literally aware of all things at all times. But the, the fascinating thing is, like, let's say I go downstairs, I can d notice that there's dust on the mantle, dishes that need to be done. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking the appointments that need to be made, the calls I'm going to be on today, the grocery shopping, I need to need, place my Instacart order, I got to get the kids to school, right? All that stuff is playing out, but it's literally yelling at me at equal decibel of sound. Mm. Not to mention... We're eating food that's not so nutritious. We're breathing air that's not so clean. We're drinking water that's contaminated. So we have stress that is real, imagined, or anticipated mm. that we're pretty much bombarded with each and every day. Mm. And so then over time, particularly for a woman, we are served by that feminine flow. Like if you imagine a river, the banks are the masculine, and the water is the feminine. And that's not, like if you're male-bodied, you're female-bodied, we all have masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. But for those of us that are female-bodied, we require listening into that inner critic, honoring that water aspect, mm -hmm. the flow. Mm -hmm. And when we don't honor that, it, the burnout is inevitable. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm thinking about uh, the deeper roots. I have curiosity around, we've talked a little bit about this before around the feminist movement and how it's really has served 
uh, women in a lot of ways, but in some ways it hasn't. Because I think what has happened is we've we've wanted to assert ourselves in the workspace, which I think is really important. Absolutely. And it's actually okay if you don't want to do that too, mm-hmm. just to say. Um, but through that transition, we've gained, you know, more financial freedom, uh, you know, more, we've had, there's been a lot of energy around it, but having to like make our place in, in the workforce. But along the way, we actually haven't redistributed the other responsibilities. That part. Yep. And so I think in some ways, I feel like, oh no, like we forgot that part. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how much that part plays a role. And I've yeah. talked about the, um, a particular book and I'm, Oh gosh, I'm I'm not gonna blank on. It. I'm gonna come back to it, where this author talks about it's it's not just about giving the work to your partner because that in itself is more work. It is yeah, the project. It's manager. about <laughs> our, our our exactly. <laughs> it's about the collective whole holding value for those things on the personal side of the family side or the interpersonal relationship side, holding value around that work. So that mm-hmm. way, when we say actually. I'm going to choose a career too. The rest of our home, our society, our greater culture can go, we support that. And this other work you're doing is so important. How do we redistribute the workload? Because that's also valuable, right? We're missing that value piece. So I like to talk about that. Yeah. And, and listen, I'm a CEO. I'm the breadwinner in my home. I've got three young children. And so uh, boundary setting mm-hmm. and self prioritization right. becomes a non negotiable. Mm. And I think the the real crux of it for me is for most women, we're good at serving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're good at giving. But many have these underlying, deep rooted feelings of guilt or shame when we allow ourselves to receive, when we raise our hand and say, actually, I need some help. Mm -hmm. I'm going to delegate. Like I will never forget when I was first really doing well with my business and I had hired someone to come in and do meal prep and I had someone in cleaning the house. And I had a moment where I was um, in the living room and I had the chance to have some quality time with my daughter. She was maybe three at that time. And it was painful for me to just sit and play a card game or a puzzle or do something with her, knowing that there's someone in my kitchen right there. I can see her doing meal prep and there's someone upstairs cleaning my house. That propensity to want to, yeah, like, Mm. oh, I can help you. You want me to mop too? (laughs) Like, no, (laughs) this is my chance to actually receive. Receive. And saturate and be present with, here's, I am with you right now, and this is me dropping into being a mom, Mm -hmm. because there's lots of times in my day where I'm showing up as business owner or community member or wife or all the roles that we play. Mm -hmm. And so as we've gone out and taken on more, the importance of also being able to set boundaries and say no and prioritize ourselves becomes that much more important. So I often say, fill up your own cup first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what ends up happening is either we're going on fumes with, for if, if this is audio visual, I have my cup, it's filled right now. I have my adaptogen elixir in there. Mm-hmm. Um, if I am going on an empty cup or if my cup has cracks and it is leaking and I'm just like, putting out the fire in front of me. I got to serve everybody else. All all these things that need to be done. There is so much power in taking the pause to go, no, 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 no. I'm going to fill up me first. Yeah. And everybody else gets to wait. Yeah. And I think, I I think about the, the idea around burnout and shared values and distributing the mental load. Like I, I, I get a little obsessive about it actually, because I just, I think it's very fascinating. Like, when I even am talking to my partner, when I'm like, do you value this thing that I'm doing around maybe we're diving into parenting strategies or do you value the outcome and I'm doing the work, right? Right? Because like you're, you're, there's a difference I think between valuing something and appreciating something like, okay, great. Like Mm -hmm. you appreciate, like he's really good at giving me the gratitude for it, Mm -hmm. but I want to like kind of challenge us to go a little bit deeper and say, do you value it too? Like, do you develop, do you value the developmental outcome of our children? Because 
I'm driving that train and that's exhausting, yeah. right? I'm thinking about 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And I, and I think that one of the things I'm personally working on is I don't have the answer to that, how to make that shift, because that's a really big shift in our culture. Right. But it's about like coming to the table with a vulnerable conversation around it. Right. Yeah. And like one of the things I've recently done in my family is I've said that it takes a thousand things to make this family go round. Let's put it on paper and put a name to there it. There you go. Um, I understand that I get a little bit resentful and tri- triggered just in having to even make the chart. Um, but it's a step in the, in the right direction around saying, like, how can I distribute this so that my children, one, see that I'm not the only one who does this. And in fact, I've been doing this exercise with my children lately because they have their own charts, too. Like, this is what we need to do today is pause everyone and take a look around and see something that's not on your chart that mm-hmm. needs to be taken care of. Mm. Because yeah. otherwise, I just get to be, sometimes I feel like trapped in my own mind of like, somebody help me, this is too much. Right. And I don't know how to get it out, and I don't know how to make the shift, and I just feel completely overwhelmed and shut down, and I'm not resource enough to make the change. So then it just is this vicious cycle. But just yeah. simply acknowledging that there is not always a shared value system and what to do with that. Yeah. And the book that I was referring to earlier is called Fair Play. Oh, yeah. We'll talk okay. About mm-hmm. So play. Um, it's an incredible book that talks about this. And I, I think I wanted to bring it up because I see it in many, if not all of my friends who are female who have children. They take mm-hmm. on these incredibly uh, significant values that contribute to the greater whole of our society. Right. And it, th- their partners are willing to show up and hear them, but it's not stemming from the partner. It's stemming from the woman who's who's thinking about these things. So, mm-hmm. again, I don't necessarily have the solution, but I think it's directly correlated to burnout and why w- women are probably more burnt out than ever, in my for opinion. For sure. For sure. Yeah. It's and, you know, I think all. Ev- <laughs> Well, and every family dynamic is different. Yeah, I, I look in my scenario. I'm in a heterosexual marriage. We have three young children. They're eleven, nine, and six right now. And July of 2021, we brought my husband home as a stay-at-home dad. So he's actually been the one responsible for all the household stuff, all the children, and wanting to make the charts. But here's the thing. In the last year, we've realized it's not working. Mm. We're not mutually fulfilled. Mm. And so we're coming back together as a family, all five of us saying, okay, what's working, what's not working? How do we restructure this Mm -hmm. so that everybody feels intellectually stimulated, emotionally stimulated, physically stimulated, sexually stimulated? I mean, obviously not the children. Not the children. (laughs) We got that. We got it. We got it. (laughs) And, And the thing that as you were talking around values, I think the piece is it's not just what do we value, but how do we communicate what we value? Yeah. And it brings me back to the five love languages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if, if my, in my scenario, if my husband is trying to show that he values what I'm contributing to our household by bringing me gifts, it's not my love language. Right. So he might be saying, I value you, I value you, and I'm not hearing, I value you. Mm-hmm. Now, if he gives me some quality time, and, and schedules a date, now I'm hearing it. Now I'm hearing he values what I'm contributing. And same with him. Right. In his love language, it's words of affirmation and it's touch. So if I take that moment to put my hand on him and share words of affirmation and share my appreciation, he feels valued. Mm. So it feels like there's two pieces here. It's us getting clear with what is it that I value and how do I, how do I feel valued? Mm-hmm. What are my value systems? Yeah. And how do I prefer the appreciation to be communicated so that I hear it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like powerful. That. Mm-hmm. I want to, both of you actually talked about this idea of like sitting with the family and like showing all the things and discussing the things. I've been talking to my children primarily about this concept. Someone actually found on Instagram, this concept of noticing and doing Mm -hmm. as opposed to like me creating 75 charts for us to go through every day because that's overwhelming um, and definitely contributed to my burnout. There were charts all over my house. I have a command center. (laughs) Command center. It's a whole thing, y'all. I love it. But this idea of like we live here collectively as a family and Sometimes you just need to, not sometimes, most of the time, you need to notice and do. Mm -hmm. You're Mm -hmm. walking through the bathroom and there's a towel on the floor. 
it doesn't belong there. <laughs> so notice and do. Kids, you know, and adults too, like, I didn't put that there. I didn't do that. So trying to create this idea of collective responsibility, um, I, I don't have the answers either. I'm still trying to figure it out. I have three children. They're 12, 10, and 8. But I think a part of the issue with burnout in women has a lot to do with the, the multitasking that we do so mm -hmm. well, <laughs> or maybe not always so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when we can incorporate the people in our community, our home, our family, wherever it is, our businesses, and, and mobilize people to understand, like, these are all the things that need to be done, and we all have some responsibility to contribute. This is not just mommy's job or just the wife's job or just the owner's job. Like, we all have some collective responsibility here. Yeah. My thought process behind that is that we'll eliminate or decrease some of the burnout. Am, am I on the right track with that? Because I'm really trying here for my I mean, I, th I think we all, I, I don't have all the answers there. I think we find it all our, our, our own way. Yeah. I, I think where we, what, what becomes important is to be having this conversation. Right. And take the pause and get quiet with what is working, what do I desire, mm -hmm. and am I allowing myself to receive support? The, the feminine energy or mature feminine is receivership. It's surrender. Like I'm a midwife. I've attended hundreds of births. When a woman allows herself to melt and surrender, it is so powerful. Mm. There's nothing like it. And I think we've forgotten somehow there's this idea that receivership or surrender is like weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, it's where we're at our most powerful. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to get honest with, am I there, this type A personality, go, 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 do, do, do. Sometimes it's harder to delegate because now you got to spend the time to, to tell them what to do. And it's just easier if I do it myself. But all right, can I relinquish some control? Let it be messy. Let it be imperfect. But it's not on my shoulders. Mm. And I think I got to. I got to comment on that because I do got to call myself out here because I do have a very willing partner. Um, and he's like, you got to be willing to let me do it my way and not yeah. your way. Like put That's your right. manual aside, get away from the command center, and put your manual what? aside <laughs> and let me just do it my way. And that yeah. is hard to do that. Right. I think that it comes from, yeah, it's this place of surrender and letting go and release of control. So I, I appreciate you bringing up just that idea around that is the yep. most ma like a mature feminine energy comes I like from that, that space. Yes. I haven't heard We've got to let them time. fumble. We've got to let them fumble. Yeah. And the children too. Right. We got to let them fumble. And it's like, all right, it's not perfect, but there's movement and it's getting done. Mm -hmm. Is there something, I mean, it sounds like, you, you know, I, one of the questions I had is like, do you see some commonalities globally here among women with burnout? Is this like a really like U.S. situation, like a United States type of situation? Or do you see yeah, a common a thread? Question. Yeah. No, I definitely feel like U.S. and Canada, like U.S., we're rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We're killing the burnout. Yeah. <laughs> the, the amounts of hypothyroidism and adrenal fatigue that I am seeing on labs is astounding for me. The amount of anxiety that we're carrying. And often a lot of the women, women that I work with are in that perimenopause chapter, so 40s, early 50s. And we can't. We can't pretend anymore. There's no more sweeping it under the rug. And the burnout is real. And it shows up as fierce irritability and fiercely wanting to crawl out of their own skin. Mm -hmm. You know, the clients that I have in Europe and, and the Caribbean and Australia, it is different. There's, okay. a, there's a very different tone. Even Canada, it's, there's, there's just a little bit lighter energy to it. Um, I just wonder but how much yes, of that has to do with the U.S. being so individualistic and kind of capital driven, right? So like one of my best yeah. friends is in the corporate tech world and she's got to keep up with all of, I mean, there's, it's a huge disproportionate between men and women in that industry. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. she has to keep up with all these men who have the wives taking care of everything or the, you know, she, and, and it's like, oh my goodness, like just for her to be able yeah. to have like some equality in the workspace, totally. she has to totally. do that. It's also culture. Like I remember when I, the first time I went to Spain, it was like, oh wow. Mm -hmm. They work in order to live. Mm -hmm. yeah. They actually use a siesta mm -hmm. and stuff shuts down. Yeah. I love that. And in the US, we live in order to work. Like that's 
where where our pride comes in a lot mm-hmm. of the time. I, I just no, you go ahead, Lisa. I want to circle back to the because you're talking about like seeing the effects of burnout like on labs. I really want to know like this whole connection between our hormones and burnout yeah. and like what the response is. You know what it looks like. You know on your end as a professional who works with people. In that yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Okay, so our adrenals. They're about they're small, like the size of a walnut, kind of right back um, on either side on our lower back, and they are the main hub for the response of what we call fight, flight, or freeze. Gotcha. Okay, so a lion's coming. I'm going to fight hard. I'm going to run fast, or I'm going to freeze. Mm-hmm. There's also fawn in there, but we'll keep it simple as fight, flight, or freeze. And like I said earlier, stress can be real, imagined, or anticipated. So you're watching a scary movie and your palms are sweating and your heart is racing. The body is physiologically having the same response as though it's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're putting our child to bed at night and tuck them in. I love what Brene Brown says about that love being the most vulnerable feeling. And in those moments of vulnerability, we will automatically dress rehearse tragedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how many moms out there know what I'm talking about? You're putting your, you feel that love. You're like, oh, there he is walking to school by himself for the first time. And I love him so much. And oh, shit, what if a car runs over him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what happens if, I, if there's a loss? We dress rehearse tragedy. And in those moments, we're actually causing stress. So what happens The adrenals go on hyperdrive. Cortisol is the main hormone I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So cortisol is being pumped out and pumped out and pumped out. Ironically, for women that are on the pill, the the same response is happening. We're finding that progestin, the synthetic progesterone, is doing the same thing to the adrenals. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going, going, doing, doing. Eating poor food, overdoing on caffeine, not getting enough sleep, stressed out, can't turn the brain off. And now the adrenals will pump out so much cortisol, it then impacts the thyroid. So how ironically, how ironic that the most prescribed medication for women in the United States is synthetic thyroid, Mm. because the thyroid crashes, the adrenals get too tired. And then when I look at a 24 hour cortisol curve, when a woman collects you know, right when she wakes up, half an hour, an hour in the afternoon, right before bed, I can see the curve. And often what I'm seeing now is it's flat. The body's like, I got nothing. There's Mm. no cortisol here. So now a woman feels tired. She's putting on weight. She's waking between two to 4 a.m. with her mind buzzing, but her body exhausted. And now this is a great example. I, w- um, I was interviewed on a podcast yesterday, and, and she said this. I was like, this is so good. If you imagine a symphony, and let's say it's p- the, there's this beautiful music, and the violinist goes rogue. It just <laughs> decides to like, do its own thing, and it goes fast, loud, whatever. And everybody else in the symphony is going to try to compensate. Like, what's going on? Okay, should I stop? Maybe I'm going to also try to go really loud. Right. I'm going to speed up and try to meet it. And, and it creates this, this discordance. Yeah, and so that's what ends up happening in the body. The adrenals are, are like beating so, so fast on hyperdrive trying to compensate for this excess stress because we're not setting boundaries and we're pushing it too hard and we're not eating good food and we're not filtering our water and we're too stressed out. And so now the thyroid crashes and then the body stops producing hormones because it doesn't feel safe. Mm. In the midst of fight, flight, or freeze, go back to that example of a wildebeest or a lion's coming. Hormone production shuts off. The immune system shuts off. Mm digestion shuts off and clarity of thought shuts off. So now the immune system's like, no, 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 not important. If I'm in survival, I've got 60 seconds to figure out how I'm going to run from this lion. Somebody sneezes with COVID on me. The body's like, sorry, but I can't deal with that right now. I'm in survival. Hmm. So the immune system is shut off. Hormone production is shut off. Of course, we want to feel spectacular and have regular menstrual cycles and great fertility and amazing orgasms. Not important if we've got to figure out how to survive. So now the orchestra, everybody starts going wonky. Hmm. And so now a woman ends up with autoimmune conditions, um, aches and pains, excess weight, can't get pregnant, horrible experience of menopause, because oh, by the way, 
as the ovaries start slowing down, and generally that's where the estrogen and progesterone are coming from, so as that naturally goes down, in a healthy woman who's not at burnout, the, the adrenals get the knock on the door, and the adrenals like, all right, my turn. Right. I got you. Yeah. But now if the adrenals are exhausted, we don't have hormones. And so now a woman's struggling with hot flashes and irritability and weight gain and vaginal dryness and loss of libido and sleep disturbances and all of that. So there's mm. lots of hormones at play, but foundationally it comes back to the body doesn't feel safe. Mm. So we've talked a lot. I mean, I think all of us can resonate with this idea of I'm doing too much. My mind is just racing. I feel completely overconsumed by all of the requirements around me. Yep. Um, and I'm just curious, like, because I, I was talking about that loop before, like I'm too tired to even ask for the help. Um, yep. Or I use that energy to then get resentful and then I snap and then I'm grumpy and that's not really making my partner want to help. <laughs> So, like, what is, like, I would love our listeners to leave today with, like, okay, where could we just, like, pause for a moment? And what's one thing that we could do to just help ask? Like, I, I want to help. I want to put language around asking for help. Because I yeah. think that n I struggle with this myself a lot. I, I just, like, wait. I have such tolerant, such tolerant, and then I just snap. Burn out. So, <laughs> yeah. I, so yeah. what is some language that we can, that we can mm -hmm. put around asking for help? Yeah, absolutely. I call it the difficult conversation sandwich. Okay. Okay. So, I like sandwich. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's a gluten-free sandwich? Do you still like it? I don't know. Okay. I think I might need my regular sourdough. I need gluten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So in my world, you've got the two pieces of bread and let's say turkey, mayo, tomato, lettuce inside. Okay. The, the, first sand, the first piece of bread is you're bringing up a, a, a you're going to bring up a difficult conversation, but it starts with appreciation. Mm. Okay. Okay. So here's what I appreciate about you. Here's what I appreciate about our relationship. Here's something that I love. Okay. Everybody loves to feel swaddled in appreciation and we're kind of setting it up. Okay. Yeah. Then we go into the meat of the conversation. Okay. So I so appreciate all of the time we've spent together, all the ways that you show up for the family the ways that I feel loved and cared for, the times we've spent together. Um, you know, often this conversation, hopefully it's okay to talk about sex on your podcast. Often these conversations come up in, in women kind of getting daring with, with wanting something new or different or creative in their sex life. But we'll, I'll stick with, with your topic. So we're going to get into here's something that I, that I would like to shift, right? So we're getting into the meat of the conversation um, I am noticing that I'm at burnout mm. and I'm not the best version of myself to serve the family and the household and to be able to get my work done in, in a way that really serves the clients that I serve, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Okay. And what I'm realizing is I'd like to propose some changes that we make in the household and we can talk about those changes, but the other piece of the sandwich on the back end is I think when we implement this, what is the positive outcome that's going to mm. come from making the change? Right. Yeah, okay, so, so that we can see with, the, the value in it. Value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So starting with appreciation, getting into the meat of, um, you know, uh, maybe we're going to try to, you propose that we're going to limit screen time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's all get really honest. We think that we don't have time. And if we actually take account of how much time we spend scrolling on our phones, social media, watching TV in the background, kind of wasting time, it's substantial. That's just one example. Maybe it's, I would like to propose that we shift the nature of how much time we're spending doing laundry and dishes and splitting the responsibility, mm -hmm. childcare responsibility. I'd like to propose that we hire someone to come in once a week to do these activities so that the last, you know, the, the end of the sandwich is here's what I think it's going to create. Mm. Okay. I'm going to be more present. We're going to have more time together. I think we'll feel more connected. I think we're going to have more sex because we're going to, we're going to feel more fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be so dang irritable. The viper is not going to come out as easily yeah. and our home is going to be a happier place, which then means you're going to wake up not feeling so exhausted. We're all going to sleep better and you're going to be more productive at the work that you're doing as well. 
But I we're love that I forget the it. bread. Right. I go right for yeah. the meat. Yes. A lot <laughs> yeah. of us do. Yeah, I forget the, the appreciation and the like, yeah. this is why this would be valuable and this is why we should buy into this. I go straight to... This is what's stressing me out. The, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and it's your fault. Right. Right. And like really yeah. I have to take more responsibility for that mm-hmm. and coming in and offering an appreciation and then saying, look, I feel really burned out and I'm so burned out that I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how to distribute the mental load that I'm carrying right now and I need your help. And I know mm-hmm. that if we can come together and, and work through this – this is how our life could improve. Yeah. I yeah. think that that is different language than language I was using. <laughs> and being clear with what does it provide for me? Yeah. yeah. I love that. Because that's the, that's the missing piece. When we're in a loving relationship and we're just, you know, it's, it, it's so fascinating. Even with how we parent, it really comes back to we all need to learn better leadership skills, not by dictation and telling mm-hmm. people what to do, but actually leading by example right. from a really empowered place and coming from a loving place. You know, there's a great audible you might enjoy. It's by Alison Armstrong. It's called Celebrating Partnership. She did a workshop that's recorded and um, I don't like I don't make any money. There's no affiliate here or anything, but you could put the link in the show notes potentially. OK, wonderful. Um, it's spectacular. And in part of it, she goes through the difference between a male and female brain. She studied the male and female brain for decades. But also, how do we make agreements? Yeah. And how do we get clear with, well, what do I value? And what are some deals that feel important for us to make in our current relationship dynamic? But also, what does it provide for me? Yeah. What does it provide for me when, when it's done this way? What does it provide for me when it's done this other way? And what does it provide for us and our family dynamic, our, re- our relationship? Um, anyway. I love that. We'll I definitely like try to include that in the show notes mm-hmm. so people can. It's beautiful. Well, yeah. before we, we wrap here, Mariah, I want to I wanna ask you our big, our big question. Um, yeah. What's an old belief that you have shed that has impacted your life in a big way? What's something you used to believe that you no longer do that has really impacted your life? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Always. And I was raised in one of those households where self-reliance was the mm-hmm. thing that kept me going. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of divorce, substantial amount of, of addiction from various parents and um as early as age four there are memories of me like I got it you know Mm -hmm. and I'm very clear that the self-reliance you know set me up did my master's at Yale I've run international health projects I run a very successful business and in the long run, it does not serve me because it really comes down to worthiness of receivership. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the peace is, is relinquishing the control, letting go of the self-reliance when I know it's not serving me. Mm-hmm. And instead allowing myself to feel worthy of receiving the support. And it comes back to this whole conversation. I mean, it's really the foundation for all of us. Yeah, We can talk about boundary setting and prioritizing ourselves and asking for help. But at the end of the day, do we foundationally feel worthy Mm. of receiving it? That's a big one. That is a big one. I so appreciate that, that response Mm -hmm. because I think that it, it, it touches all of us in a, in a, in a very similar way if we're really looking at it. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for this conversation today, Mariah. Yeah, what, how insightful. And I'd love uh, for you to share where our listeners can find you on social media. Sure, sure. So it's Mariah Brown. It's all A's. Mm-hmm. So M-A-R-A-Y-A. Mm-hmm. And you can find me in all the places. Instagram and Facebook are the most common. If you're listening on a podcast, you're welcome to come over to my podcast, which is called The Women's Vibrancy Code. And I'll make sure that the team has a link for you to continue to lean in. I often host workshops. I, you know, I, there's applications for personalized conversations. I'll come up with some things to give you guys that you can put in the show notes. Um, awesome. But yeah, just I'm very approachable. Mm-hmm. You're welcome to um, reach out my way. So the DMs I, are I'm, open. I'm, Yes, wonderful. Yeah, I much prefer quality over quantity in yeah. my space. Yeah, okay. and I tend to work with um, 
with women that are ambitious, they're the ones carrying the torches. Mm -hmm. They're the trailblazers out there, and they're really hungry to feel vibrant. Love that. And uh, if that's you, then then you're my peeps. Reach on out. <laughs> Wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. We hope our paths cross again, and uh, we will see everyone next time. Bye-bye.